We are looking at a traditional square of opposition and we had covered up till contradictories in the last session. Today we are in this session we are good, going to look at contraries and subcontraries and subalternation. So subcontraries. So let's define subcontra oh sorry, contraries first. So this is an opposition as well but it is an opposition which is weaker than contradiction, contradiction in a way which will be obvious in a minute. So two propositions are contraries If and only if they can they cannot both be false sorry they can't both be true They can't both be true. So that means the truth of one implies the falsehood of the other. But unlike um, contradictories, they can be. They can both be false. So if we know that two propositions are contrary, and if we know that one is true, then we know that one, the other is false. But if we know that one is false, we can't make any um, corresponding inference because it's possible that it is false and it's possible that it is true so in that sense it is weaker it is a weaker inference than contradictories because in contradictories we know if it is true the other would be false and we know if it is false the other would be true in this it's only with the truth that we can infer that the other is false but not with the falsehood because in the falsehood there are two possibilities there now in aristotelian logic uh, of these four types of proposition e that is universal negative proposition is considered to be the contrary of sorry okay. universal positive and E is universal negative so these are both universal but their qualities are different they are considered to be contraries of each other that is they can't be both true that if it, this is true, then this must be false. But they can both be false. So if I know that this is false, I can't necessarily draw the conclusion that this is false or true, because it can be false or true. The only strict condition is they can't both be true. So in that sense, it's a weaker um, um, relationship because there's always uh, a possibility of a third option. Which to give a non-categorical example, for example, we can see that... Um, 
next game between England and New Zealand, for example, cricket game. And Z and England. If New Zealand win, we can say England will win the next game. Cricket win. And we can say New Zealand will win. Now it's obvious that they can't be both true. Because if England win, then New Zealand lose. And if New Zealand win, then England lose. Meaning, if one is true, the other must be false. But not the other way around, because, as it's, but they are contrary, but not contradictories, because they can both be false, for example. That is, it can be a draw. So there's a third possibility there, which you don't have in contradictions. This is just to illustrate. Um, so now let's give a categorical proposition example. So E and, sorry, I keep saying E. I mean, it's the same, but normally as a convention, we write A on the left. E, they are contraries. That is, they cannot both be true, but they can both be false. Can so let's say A. All points are idealists and no points idealists. Uh, these are contraries, they can't both be true. If this is true, this must be false. But if this is false, this can be either true or false, like possibly, depending on, obviously, the content. So they both can be false, but they can't both be true. So from this, you can draw the conclusion this is false, but from this, you can't necessarily draw the conclusion that the other is true. So. So this relationship is known as contrary. A relationship that holds between A and E. So we can safely say, like, as a matter of fact, that all points are idealists is false. Can we draw the conclusion from this to the other one we can't because they can both be false but if we had something like for example let's say all crows are black And corresponding is no crows are black, so they can't be both true, they can be both false. <laughs> so, if as a matter of fact, for example, I don't know whether it's true or not, uh, all crows are false is true, then we can draw a conclusion that this is false. Or, for example, if all swans are white is true, then we can draw the conclusion that no swans are white is false. But from no crows are black is false, we can't draw the necessary conclusion that this is true because it can be false. Okay. Another example, we know that all Pakistanis are 
agent is true. I mean, this must be false. But from no Pakistanis are Asian, then if we, let's say, if assume that is false, we can't necessarily draw the conclusion that all Pakistanis are Asians is true because there's a possibility that this can be false as well. So we know that all Pakistanis are European is false. So, but from this, no Pakistanis are European, we can't draw the conclusion that this is true. Um, because the only condition is that they can't both be true. So this can be true and this can be false. So for example, there's a possibility that Pakistanis have double passports, for example. Okay, now two propositions are called subcontraries if they cannot both be false. So that's the in contraries they can't both be true. They can both be false. Here they can't both be false. They can both be true. Um, so that means if uh, one is false, then we, we can uh, say that the other is true because they can't both be false. But if one is true, we can't say other is false, which we can in the case of contradiction. And in the case of uh, contraries, because there's a possibility that they both are true. So this is a weaker um, relationship or weaker opposition than contradic uh, contradictories as well. So the in this. In the four propositions we are looking at, or the categorical propositions, the corresponding uh, particular propositions are subcontraries. So, in that case, um, I and OR. Subcontraries. That is, they can't both be, can't both be false, but they can both be true. And one can be false and other true. So these are the possibilities. The only possibilities which is ruled out is they can't both be false, which means the only immediate inference you can drive on its own is if you know one is false the other must be true so these proposition are subcontraries um, i and o so they have the same quantity they are both particular. But they have different quality because this is affirmative and this is negative. Uh, in the case of contraries, we had the same thing. We had the same quality and different in quanti same quantity but different quality. But the only thing is quantity in that case yeah, of so contrary was universal and the quantity in here is um, particular so let's see the example for example some uh, let's say some
diamonds are stones and this would be some diamonds are not stones so they can't both be false but they can possibly be both be false but they can be true they might be true that's not necessary but they might be true so for example let's say some diamonds are pressed this seems a true fact um, so can we draw a conclusion from this that this is false no because the only condition is that they can't both be false so um, if we know that some uh, diamonds are not precious stone is false then we can draw the conclusion that this is true because they can't both be false but they can both be true so it could be true that some diamonds are precious stone it could be true that some diamonds are not uh, uh, precious stones because they they are of lower quality or they're mixed with other things I guess but they can both be they they so they can both be true but they can't both be false so some diamonds are precious stone if some diamonds are not precious stone this false this can't be false this must be true so for example let's take another factual statement which So I and O, so let's say some countries are are dictatorships. So its corresponding O would be. Some countries are not dictatorship. So, as a matter, as a matter of fact, this is true, and this is also true. So, sub countries can both be true, but you can't get an example of two subcontraries which are both false it is impossible for them to be um, both be false let's take a i proposition which is actually false so from this we can and it's called some cows are not goats must be true because they, it's impossible for them both to be false the last relationship we in the traditional square for position is that of subalternation
subalternation and this uh, relationship achieves or between propositions which have the same quality that's either affirmative or negative but different quantity so a proposition is um, so we we call them subaltern so so the particular is subaltern of in this case a universal statement and the universal statement is called superaltern and the relationship between them is called subalternation and two propositions so a proposition is a subaltern a proposition is a sub altern of its corresponding super altern if and only if the subaltern must be true if the super altern is true and the superaltern must be false if the subaltern is fa is false so it's the relationship of implication although it's a one way relationship in the sense that if superaltern is true then subaltern is true but we can't uh, draw the reverse con conclusion that if subaltern is true then necessarily the super alternate must be true we can't do that so it's it's a relation of implication in that sense okay let's so in traditional square of opposition so the relationship of subalternation as i said uh occur between corresponding proposition which have the same quantity but the same but the different quality so a and I are have this relationship of subalternation and E and O has this relationship of subalternation and in this case this is called super altern super subaltern so this is subaltern of this and this is super altern of this and same is super altern of this and this is subaltern of this and the relationship between them is the relationship of um, implication which means that um, if uh, this is true then this must be true and if this is true then this must be true but it is one way relationship it doesn't go in the other direction for obvious reasons as we will um, as we went take the examples will become clear and this um, consequence of this is that if this is false this must be false that's a... but we can't draw from the truth of this 
to the truth of this the other way around okay let's take the example so let's take a n i so for example all spiders are eight legged animals so its corresponding subaltern is some spiders are eight legged animals so if you know that um, this is true and obvious that this is true because this is basically part of that set so if if we say this is true and this is false then we would be involved in a contradiction in a sense um, and uh, similarly you can't say that this is false and that is true but from the truth of this on its own truth of uh, some spiders are it uh, truth of some spiders are eight-legged animals we can't necessarily draw the truth of all spiders are eight-legged animals for example um, so for example if we say some animals are cats then obviously it's true and it's i we can't draw the corresponding conclusion all animals are cats which is not true so from the truth of a we can drive the truth of i but from the truth of i we can't necessarily draw the truth of a and the same is with e and o let's take that and then it will finish so E and I has uh, the relationship of subalternation as well. So if E is true, then I must be true. And they both are have the same quantity but different qual qualities. So for example, position no. Uh, whales are fishes we can draw the conclusion that some whales are not fishes so if this is true then this must be true as well by implication, implication because this set is part of that set subset of that set anyway but of course we can't draw so this relationship is just one way we can't draw from the truth of i necessarily the truth of e for example if we say If we say some some animals are not cats, so that's true. But obviously, it would be wrong to draw from this the conclusion that 
corresponding E would be no animals or cats. So some animals are cat is obviously true, but this is obviously false. Um, so from the truth of this, we can't draw the truth of that. But from the truth of that, we can draw the truth of that. So that's the last one. And this is square of opposition can be it's called a square because we can represent it as a square. So this one and But this one is only one way traffic. Oh, not the other way. So this is A, this is E. This is I and this is O. So these are A and O are contradictories. And E and I are also contradictory. Um, and these are contraries can't be both true and I and O are subcontraries can't be both false and E and O and A and I are um, subalternation subalternation so in other words this is super altern this is subaltern and this is super alter and this is sub -alter. so once we obviously um, once we had these relation we can um, draw a lot of immediate experience uh, <laughs> immediate um, um, inferences for example just to give one example if a is true for example just a is true so is corresponding o would be false um, and they can't both be true so e would be false and if this is false i would be true um, So, so we are able to draw these one, two, three conclusion just by knowing the, well, the truth value of that proposition. So we'll stop here. Maybe we'll make a short video to just uh, sum it up in the next session and also reflect a bit on the nature of square of opposition. Thank you.